today I'll be showing you guys how I cool down, heat up and keep the humidity up in my lowland greenhouse. So, this is my lowland greenhouse. I have some of my nice nepenthes growing in here. The lowland nepenthes. It's a nice cross from exotica plants. Venture coast across Berkia here. They're starting to vine. Some nice old pictures. This is young, young Jack. They're brother there. Red Bull, an unknown cross. It's just called Red Bull. A lowland version of VCI. Marabas Vara Globosa at the back. And another one that you can just make out. And a Smilesi here. Now, all these Nepenthes that I have, all growing in lowland conditions. But some people, especially myself, struggle to set up these conditions. As you know, lowland Nepenthes, they need warm days, warm nights, high humidity, bright lights constantly. So, I want to show you my techniques on keeping up humidity and temperatures in the greenhouse. So firstly, the most important factor for every greenhouse is to ensure that you have a fan. As you can see on the right hand side, there's a fan busy going there. And just in front of that, you'll see a tub of water. That has a pump going up towards a wet wall. I'll explain to you how that works now in a second. So it's very important to ensure that you have a fan. This keeps the air circulated, prevents infections, molds and uh, helps to keep the air cool by circulating it around. Another way to keep air cool or much cheaper and much easier than you know using a air conditioner for example is to use a wet wall. So this wet wall you can't see it very well but this wet wall has holes here and water trickles down from this path down the wet wall and this forces it to get evaporated with the help of this fan. Now forcing the air to evaporate causes the air to cool down. So when the greenhouse gets too hot this fan kicks on which blows air out of this flap that causes a suction force inside the greenhouse and the pump inside here switches on at the same time. Then the water trickles down, the air gets evaporated and cools down the greenhouse nicely. So when I first started off with the greenhouse, I was really struggling to keep the temperatures down. So I used, above here you can see this black white shade cloth covering the greenhouse to help keep it less sunny and help to reduce the temperatures. And I was also using the, these sprinklers here going uh, along the top of the greenhouse which was sprinkled on for the entire day but this became quite expensive as you can imagine with the amount of water that was being used and I, had a sol I have a solenoid which I'll show you later that is used to switch on and off the misting system and that's kept breaking so I had to find a better solution and settled upon the wet wall this allows my temperatures to go from 50 degrees celsius inside the greenhouse down to 30 degrees celsius so it really does work it really works well and you don't really need a very fancy setup i don't have the most money so i have to make do with what i have this costs me around 400 south african rands for this block which is just under $40 American. This PVC pipe I have, I just found it and I drilled some holes into it. An old piece of pipe, which is very, very cheap. And the pipe, the most expensive part of this whole build is probably the pipe inside of the water here. So, the, so I have a thermostat outside, which I'll show you later, which switches on this pump and the fan at the same time causing this to switch on the water to roll down here and collect onto this plastic bag and go back into the reservoir so we don't waste any water. Some people, they will build a PVC pipe bottom here or at the top 
which makes it look better and is a bit more attractive and works maybe a little bit better because it will be sealed better than what I have it. But this this does work and anyone who needs a good way to cool down their greenhouse who cannot afford such expensive equipment will definitely benefit from this. One one thing to note is that you have to ensure that your greenhouse is airtight when you are using this. On the side here you can see that I have the plastic of the greenhouse tightly wrapped around the evaporative pad to ensure that there's no leaks. That's, that ensures that there's complete air suction being pulled out of the evaporative pad. Now another way which helps with keeping the greenhouse cool is to use something called thermal mat. That can be done by you know purchasing huge like 60 litre buckets and painting them black and placing them in the greenhouse but I'm quite limited for space in my greenhouse and that wouldn't really work for me but some people can do that you get a big big leak 60 litre bucket I close it off paint it black and that will absorb heat during the day which helps keep it cooler inside the greenhouse and will help to radiate the heat off at night to keep the greenhouse warmer at night however what I've done is that I use old plastic containers and fill them up with water. And these containers serve as a form of thermal mass. I'm starting to fill out my collection of plants that I'm gonna be moving very soon. So I do not need all this space. Furthermore, to heat up the greenhouse, you can use thermal mass at night by storing their energy throughout the day in those black buckets or you could purchase a greenhouse heater this greenhouse heater I've had for about two or three years now it's been it's been through a lot I've had to open it up fix pieces of it wire it differently but it still works fine you have to ensure that it's waterproof that it's safe for you you do not want to have any damages to your greenhouse or to your property but these work really well. This is a three kilowatt heater. Um, there's a, it's a big power draw. But if you are able to insulate your greenhouse really well, this heater will only kick on a couple seconds every maybe 10 minutes in winter. Like mine was just on now for about 30 seconds. And that will keep it nice and warm for the day and at night when it gets really cold. If you have enough thermal mass and insulation, it will keep the greenhouse really warm. Another thing is that I have covered the floor of my greenhouse in dirt. Many people use pebbles and rocks. Uh, this increases surface area and such, but I, I can't afford rocks and pebbles. So I just had to settle on dirt. And this also helps with the humidity. As you can see, the ground is quite, quite moist, quite wet. So throughout the day, when the sun, when the sun rays shine into the greenhouse, this evaporates the water in the soil aiding and keeping the greenhouse cool and humid which is what we need the other device you could buy is something called a hydrofogger this hydrofogger is probably the most expensive piece of equipment i own it atomizes water that collects here in this bucket and it spins at a high speed and shoots it out it's quite dry does not wet my hands but it does help to cool down the, envi the environment and to make it very humid and i'm just going to go outside to show you guys the equipment which i use so guys here we are back at the back end of the greenhouse i have another greenhouse there that i built but talking about the lowland greenhouse for now this is how I have the evaporative pad wrapped up to ensure that the water falls back into the bucket inside. But this is the most important part of the greenhouse. The thermostats, humidistats and timers. So I'll explain to you exactly what exactly is going on here. I have Inkbird thermostat, Inkbird humidistat and a timer here. So this Inkbird thermostat is very simple you just set it up plug in your heater and your fan and pump which I explained earlier to 
cool down in the greenhouse. So once it gets more than 28 degrees Celsius in the greenhouse, it kicks on the fan and the pump to help cool down the greenhouse. When it gets too cold, it switches on the heater. Over here, the humidistat kicks on when we get below eight relative humidity. This switches on the hydrofogger to help increase the humidity in the greenhouse. And now I do not have a lot of time as many people don't, which is why I have this timer here. This timer is just connected to a solenoid over here, which kicks on at night to water my plants for 15 minutes. That sprinkles that spray system that you saw above all my plants and waters them nicely. All of these systems combined with the, the, the fan, the oscillating fan that just moves the air around, all ensures that I have a perfect lowland greenhouse for my plants. Timer for watering, thermostat for heating and cooling, humidistat for applying humidity, and a normal oscillating fan. These were very easy to get on Amazon, as was this and you can purchase any and all of these items on Amazon fairly easily. I'll attach descriptions and links to these items below so that you may purchase it for yourself. Furthermore, the hydrofogger, I did connect to a water pipe here. This water pipe goes down into the greenhouse and connects into the collecting bucket which I showed you earlier. This keeps it filled up to ensure that the hydrofogger always has water. Another really good way to help increase the humidity and cool down your greenhouse is to buy high pressured fine mist outputting misting system. So that does sound like a lot of work, but essentially it's just a misting system that has very fine nozzles where the water is pumped through those nozzles at a very high pressure. But this usually means that you need to get a compressor, an air compressor, a water compressor, fine nozzles, which may all become quite expensive, but in the future, my end goal is to purchase one of these to help cool down the greenhouse when it's very hot in summer and to help keep the humidity nice and high. Although having the hydrofogger does help a lot, it will always be helpful to have something extra just as a backup and just to help keep the strain off of one device like this. So there you have it guys. Now you know how I keep my greenhouse warm and during the winter, cool during the summer, and to prevent excessive lights from entering the greenhouse to prevent burning the plant and how I help keep the humidity high in my greenhouse. Hopefully these tips help you save money on your greenhouse and to ensure the best growing environment for your plants. See you guys next time. Bye.